What's up, everybody? This is the second installment of the Mental Jews Question and Answer. And we got some very special guests here today. We got the Blade, Dexter Jackson. And we have another legend right here, Dennis James. How you fellas, how you fellas doing? Good, man. Thanks, cool, man. Cool, cool. All right, so a lot of these questions um, are for y'all, not me, which is good. <laughs> so, all right, so just jumping out the gate, first question from somebody you went neck and neck with a couple of weeks ago, Phil, he, he yeah. wants to know to you, he, he asked you, do you plan on beating that young ass in 2016? <laughs> he, he said, you're a fucking legend. Oh, I appreciate it, Phil. Yeah, I plan on doing it. Um, I plan on coming back and, um, you know, I'm standing next to you again next year, Phil. And um, you know me, Phil. You know I'm coming for that ass. So, <laughs> so you know, I'm just looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to actually getting back in training again. It just feels nice to be back in this position, you know, to be 46 years old and play second. It's like me winning the whole thing over again. I'm very, very happy with you know, the outcome. And um, now I'm just looking to be even better next year. All right. Can you tell people about the, I know it's a rivalry because y'all both want to win. Right. But the camaraderie as well with it, because there was some pictures out on the internet of y'all really embracing each other, right. giving each other props. Let people know about like that 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 brotherhood, that camaraderie. Right. See, when Phil first came in the game, I taught him all the ropes. You know, just like Flex and Chris Kamir taught me. You know, so when he first came in the game, you know, he was like, you know, following behind us like a shadow. He was right behind us. We were teaching him the ropes. And now he's, you know, and I've always said, and I was beating him every show. And I've always said back then when I was beating him, once Phil get that muscle maturity, I'm not gonna be able to beat him no more. Um, and so, as you see, he's five time Miss Olympia now. Um, but I've been in the game so long, I've come in the game beating guys, and then guys come back the younger guys come out, come out, and then they start beating me. Even though you know I may beat them a few times, then they come out and start beating me. And I've been in that game so long, I've now come back and start beating them. You know what I'm saying? So because they get older too, and then, <laughs> exactly, and they're not as consistent as you. Exactly. That's simple as that. You just gotta wait till they get to that point. That's right. When they pass that age time, where your body starts. But fading a little. but then is this? That's this is never you know not to brag, but that. This has never really happened, you know, like a, like it's doing now. Not really. When guys beat, when I'm beating guys, they start beating me, then I'm like beating them again. So it's, mm. it's you know, I'm, this really hadn't hit me, you know, because I'm still in it and I'm still, you know, loving doing what I'm doing. But I know when I retire and look back, it's going to be like, dang, man. Right. You know? Phil, don't be mad, but I'm over there in the gifted section. I'm with everybody <laughs> at finals. And I'm like, Dex, oh man, I think I think it's gonna be an upset. You know? <laughs> well, let's ask Dexter. This is my question to Dexter. <laughs> this is let's see if he's honest. Do you think you beat Phil this year? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you think you, you think you should you, you should be? Your yeah, I think I, well, hey, you heard the crowd. Mm. You know, I was backstage. I mean, well, the crowd. I mean, you know, the crowd went crazy. Mm. You know, everybody thought I should have won judging by the crowd. I remember when I won Olympia, the same, I had the same effect. Cause you beat the Mr. Olympia, right? This has never happened But before. when I came back the next year, you could hear a pin drop when they called Dexter Jackson. Yeah. And ever since then, it's not been the, you know, it hadn't been the, 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 um, I hadn't got the type of applause, response. applause or response that I got for this Olympia again. So it just feels good to be back in the mix again. So think about the next response when you walk on stage again. When the next one I walk on stage and I beat him? Oh yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be that. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I said it, Phil. <laughs> I, I honestly called that it would be between Dex and I called it Friday night. Yeah. They might yeah, Mike called it like long, Mike called it before. Uh, yeah, on yeah, well, I could, I, yeah, but I couldn't call it before I see the guys. Right. I right, had to right. see it. I yeah. called the top ten all the way down to the first. On point. Oh, did you? After I counted down the top ten before they announced it. 
Name but by not name. In particular order. In particular order. Name by name from 10 to 1. You didn't say I was going to be second. Say what? You all that night you did. I when you seen us. I, I told you Friday night after pre judging. Yeah, you did. I came to you, you gotta go get that car. Well, that's hard, that's easy to do. Mike called it before the show even happened. Well, I couldn't call before the show because I didn't see anybody. He didn't either. Yeah, but he called it. Yeah. yeah. But no, I, no, like I said, after top 10 down, you can watch the well, replay. When you came back in there and you told me, uh, you, you put your arm around me, you were like, you fight for me. You and you weren't even in second like, on Friday, you were in third. Yeah. But I said, you go get second. Yeah, you did. You damn sure did. And I was like, man, watch out, Dennis. I said, you go, he said, if I, if I get second place, he said, I'm going to buy this car. <laughs> right, right, I text right, him right. after, I said, you better get that car. All right, all right. <laughs> that's the way you tell him? <laughs> yeah. 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 I on. had to live up to it. I had to buy yeah, it, too. But, yeah, but then he went on and beat everybody again at the two, the two major shows. I mean, right, right. No, you know what I mean? So, so this year, he won, what, four shows? Yeah. Out of five. That's no, right. I won three shows out of four. No, you won four out of five. You won Australia, you won Columbus. You don't even remember that, do you? Oh, you're right. I won four out of five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You won, you won three Arnolds this year, one Prague. That's right. And second at the Olympia. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Wow. I know more about you than you think. So. <laughs> That's a shame. No, I won three out of four. Wow. This one can go to either one of y'all. Well, Dex, I guess you can go first. Um, I try to pronounce people's names in these, but. This one is crazy. Nedjk Stosik <laughs> wants to know, what's the funniest backstage Olympia moment you've ever seen? The funniest backstage Olympia moment? When Kevin LeBron had his trunks on backwards. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's my favorite. How long did that last? Did somebody tell him? <laughs> uh -uh. You went on stage? You went on stage with him like that and everything. That's great. <laughs> what about you, Dennis? Um, I remember one, I just can't remember who it was that was about to walk on stage with his socks on. <laughs> I don't remember who it was. It was in the early 2000s. Somebody had his socks on and he walked up the stairs. He was still at the man I can't remember who it was. I would literally have to dig back. But he just stopped it right up stick. Right before he walked on stage, I said, You got your socks on. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have stopped him. I was like, Yeah, yeah no, no, no. You eliminated? I can't remember who it was, though. That's comedy. All right. Uh, this this question will go to whoever want to hop on it. Uh, okay, Bobby De Niro asks, "What are your thoughts on intermittent fasting? Is it effective or not?" You get that one, D. You you the athlete. I ain't never fasted before. I don't know nothing about that. No. What's the question? What's what are your thoughts on intermittent fasting? Is it effective or not? Go, go, go ahead and answer that. Depends on why you fast. I mean, if you fast, if you do it. If you do your cardio, I would always do it on the empty stomach because I always said, tell people, if you do your cardio and you eat before you do your cardio, so you basically burn off the calories you just had. So if you want to get to, uh, uh, to start burning off some fat, you want to make sure you want to. That is a fat you're talking about. Huh? What kind of fat are we talking about? Intermittent, I, I believe it's pretty much you won't eat all day. Exactly. You pick all one time. What do you mean all day? You pick one time a day to eat, and like that's it. Really one, big, like one big meal. That kind of what do I know about this stuff? Yeah. <laughs> you, like, you, well, you know, well, this is the thing. Yeah. It's like you know how it is in fitness. Every so often, it's some new trends, and that's a trend right now. Oh, that's not a lie. Mom, that's not yeah, a lie. They, they go all day. They can't eat nothing all day until they they one meal, one meal at night or something. Okay, so question. Well, what's that for? Uh, weight know. loss, fat loss, just uh, a different style of uh, dieting. Well, then they just don't eat it all. Well, some for religious purposes too, though. Well, Ramadan, they eat like, only when it's yeah, dark. Yeah. And they all right. So, what about this? Tubules. All right. What about this? So, we all know, you know, uh, basic knowledge is, you know, six to eight small meals a day. Do y'all? How do y'all feel about? Because some people, including myself, I don't do that many meals a day. I do, you know, three, sometimes four, sometimes two big meals. What do you believe about, what do you feel about uh, calories in, calories out versus um, your meals timed out? Well, we go more meals a day simply for the reason because we want to stay, your body wants to stay in the anabolic phase. You don't want to go catabolic. And I always say, staying anabolic means you should have protein at least every three hours. Mm -hmm. So um, with the carbs, you can do whatever you want to do. It depends on, you know, if you're trying to lose weight or lose body fat. But in order to uh, build muscle or hold on to the muscle, you got to have 
protein every three hours at least for the time you up. If you sleep it doesn't really matter. But if you up, you gotta have the protein. Well with me, um, I have a really, really fast metabolism. Yeah. If I don't eat every two and a half to three hours, then I'll lose five pounds. Mm -hmm. If I skip one meal, five pounds are lost. Mm -hmm. So with me, I have to, I'm not a big eater. I yeah. actually hate to eat, right. okay? I mean. I couldn't tell over at Lolo's. Well, that's different, <laughs> that's different. But, but now I'm eating, I'm eating um, regular foods. I'm not right. eating diet food right, right now. And being when I start eating diet food, I have to eat a lot of food, man. I'm talking two cups of rice with every meal. Right. So you're talking six meals, seven meals like that. That's a lot of food to consume. Mm -hmm. So that's why I hate to eat. It's diet food. I have to do it year round now because of my age, but it helps so much. I mean, it is it has changed me and my right. body. Okay, right. so this is why I'm able to continue to get better because of eating clean all season. When right. I was young, they didn't know me. I would I would need if, I, if I'm dieting, I'd be in the airport and just go right to McDonald's. I, I don't care no meals with me. Right, None of that right. stuff back then. But now it's different, you know, I have to do things, you know, I have to learn to adjust. Mm -hmm. This is what I've always, this is what I've been telling you, this is what I've told you earlier, you gotta learn how to adjust, right. okay? And, and um, find ways to help you get better, and this is one of the ways to help me get better. Mm -hmm. Now when I retire, I, two meals a day, I'm happy. That's all I eat, two meals a day. I can't wait right. to be able to just eat twice a day. Right, right, right. You think you're just gonna get it? Now I'm gonna eat chips and all that all day. I'm just saying, right, but right, two right. meals. Yeah. You know. Okay. All right, this question is from John Scarborough, and this was to Dexter. John says, Dexter, I know your genetics has helped you over the years, but how have you been able to stay so consistent so long without injuries damp dampering your success? Again, um, you have to learn how to make adjustments. I, I touched on earlier with heavy training. You know, at, at the beginning, the first 10 years, of course you got to train here, but once you build a foundation, you got to learn and start getting older, you got to learn how to make adjustments and start backing off of all the heavy weight out, you will start having, you know, having issues. So, which is, you know, the last five years, I changed my whole workout regimen. I went out to LA and I started training with Charles Glass and, and we trained on a lot of machines. A lot of people think you can't grow a machine, but I'm the prime example don't be scared to get on a machine, okay? Machine work is good, you can still grow off machines, and plus it's a lot safer for you, and, and you protect yourself from, from actually tearing something. When I, my motto is, and why I've been so, you know, so successful in not tearing anything, is because if I tweak something, I'll take off from doing that particular exercise for that body part until it heals. I won't touch nothing, I won't try and work around it, I won't do nothing until he heals, because most of his memory is going to come right back anyway. A lot faster than you think. Right. So, but you do recommend when you're getting started, trying to build a base to hit them compound movements. Yes, right? of course. Have to. Okay. All right. Oh, well, Dennis, you, you were talking about, I was listening to you the other day, and I like what you were saying, too. You said something along the same line. That's why you just, you, you kind of came up, invented MTT, because, you know, when you get older, you got to, you gotta, you gotta adjust. adjust. And if you wanna mimic heavy weight, all you gotta do is just take the lighter weight and go super, super slow. Mm -hmm. There's way more time under tension, there's way more uh, 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 blood flow more to the muscle. It feels like if you take, let's say you take one plate mm -hmm. on each side on the bench and, and you go 15 seconds on the way up, it feels like it's three plates and you yeah. have that, you get that amount of blood. You get more pump mm -hmm. from doing that than when you take three plates and you wrap it four to 10 to 12 to 15 times. Right. You know what I mean? But you don't have that stress on your joints, mm -hmm. on your tendons. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's lighter weight. Right. But it feels, I challenge anybody. No, I and seen, you saw. I've seen, yeah. Yeah, I, I challenge that, anybody, it yeah. doesn't matter what body part, mm -hmm. to do it that way. And I guarantee you, because I asked people before, because everybody is a different strength. You know? right. not, I, I don't use one blade for everybody. Right. But if I ask you, I said, what are you doing when you train? Oh, I do four or five on the incline. Mm -hmm. All right, but I said, let's try to do a plate and a half. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be like, I'm joking. And then he's going to struggle with right. a blade and a half, right. and he's going to feel real stupid. Right. But he's going to realize that he has a pump with one set only mm -hmm. that he probably doesn't even get in two or three exercises. Right. So that make that makes people think. I'm not saying do it all the time, but right. I said implement. Right. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. protect yourself from, you know, at a certain age, injury is career ending. Right. You know, yeah. If Dexter injured himself right now, 
even that I believe he can go another five years and be on top. Mm -hmm. If he would injure himself right now, an injury would heal way slower mm -hmm. than somebody who's 20 years old. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? Right. And it's mentally not as easy to overcome an injury at, right. at 40, 40 or 40 plus. Right. You know what I'm saying? So he's doing it smart, you know? He doesn't have to get any bigger. Right. I, I can attest to it, everybody out there. I remember, uh, I, you know, I'm squatting, I'm benching heavy. I do, I do powerlifting meets. But um, I remember when I was competing, I got on a, um, it was a pin-loaded leg press machine. Mm -hmm. And I was just doing, I did, I don't know, eight or nine sets of 20. And I had the nastiest pump I ever had mm -hmm. from any squats, anything else. Yeah, it depends I mean? on the angle. If the angle yeah. is right, yeah. Good angle, a smooth machine. It wasn't nothing hardcore about it. I'm like, why did I get such a pump from this, right. you know? So I can't attest to that as far as getting that blood in there. Right, right. You know, so got to train smart, y'all. Yep. All right. Um, next question. Uh, pump, Pumping Shark. Man, y'all got some crazy names. <laughs> Pumping Shark. Uh, three factors to big success. What do you do besides bodybuilding? What books do you read? And I guess they've done that to all of us. You want to go uh, first dance? Okay. The three points. Three factors to three your factors success. Three factors to my success is consistency. Whatever you set your mind to, be consistent. Don't give up if it doesn't work right away because nothing goes right away. What comes fast will go fast. So be consistent. Um, another fact is do what you like. You know, if you uh, if you're trying to do something that you don't even like, you think you're gonna have a very hard time to be consistent if it's not working right away. So, choose something that you really like. Number three, I would say always, and especially in this sport, always be good to your fans because the fans are the ones that look up to you. The fans are the ones that want to buy your DVDs, buy your pictures. The fans are the ones that follow you, and that creates interest in sponsors and so on. So. And like I always say, the fans can make you or they can break you. Because if you don't have fans, you are nobody in this sport. It doesn't matter if you win shows or not. You got to have the people that look up to you. You got to be good to them. You got to be nice. You got to just be, you know, you got to talk to them, you know. Because, you know, think about you. I remember when I was coming up and I read Flex magazine back in 1993. And I saw Flex Wheeler in, uh, in uh, winning the Arnold Classic. You know, and, and I'm... I was just in awe looking at these pictures, you know. I never in a million years thought I was going to stand next on stage uh, with him and, and Kevin and all these guys I looked up to. But, you know, when you get to see these people for the very first time and they actually talk to you and they're really cool, you know what I mean? That does a lot for a person. I mean, it, 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 I was like, I can't believe he talked to me like I'm a normal person. Now, he, he, could, he could be an, an asshole, yeah. you know what I mean? And I would never like him no more for the rest of my life. Right. So the first impression is very important. So. Be good to the people that look up to you. That's very important. I, yeah, I'm going to tell you, I can attest to that from both of these guys because when I met both of them for the first time, I just assumed they had no idea who I was. And they both were super cool, just genuine, nice people. You know what I mean? So, and, you know, I'm in the industry, but I am a fan. Like, I am just like y'all. You know what I mean? So, I'm a fan. You know, um, I look at things from a fan's perspective, and he's absolutely right because. You know, I was telling Dex, you know, we, we seen each other in passing at the Arnold's um, one year, and he was like, he, Mike Rasheed, what's up? And I was like, I'm looking behind you, like, you know what I mean? And I'm tapping my boy, like, like you just say my name. You know what I mean? It meant, it meant so much to me, you know what I mean? It means a lot. Yeah. It means a lot. So, um, yeah, he's absolutely right. Yeah, and that's the same as Dex said earlier, when right. a fan come up and cry, you know, mm -hmm. it happens all the time. Right. Right. And this is, you know, you got to take this for granted. This is very important. Okay. How about you? Well, since y'all want to talk so much, you got to repeat the question. Man. <laughs> three facts to your success. Right. Yeah, three, three facts to my three, success. Three factors, yeah. Believe. Um, got to believe you can do something, man. Without, without that, you'd never go nowhere in life. Um, set goals. Um, that's always been one of the main things that have gotten me where I am setting goals and never stop setting goals and I try to achieve those goals and I've been blessed to be able to achieve just about every goal that I've set and three you know um, be I, 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 you know without God I mean to God be the glory everything is is 
for me, not saying you guys, but if you guys do believe in the Bible, and which is what probably the only book I read, I only read magazines no more. Um, probably the only book that I do read is the Bible. Um, so if you guys do believe, you know, in, in God or whatever, you know, make sure you have Him as a big part of your success in your life. And, uh, um, with me, I agree with what both of them said. Um, you know, I my, my thing, and I tell you guys all the time, people ask me, oh, what do I need to do? Look, you got to not be, and I say this to my friends, I say this to everybody, don't be average. Don't do what everybody else is doing. You know, you got to work your ass off. Even if you have a job that you don't like, be fucking dedicated, be faithful to that job, and do more than what's expected of you. Because it will translate into whatever else you get into when you really find something that you really like. You will have developed that work ethic, you know, and it's, it's, that is, that is what will make you wealthy. Having a solid work ethic when everybody else is just chilling, laid back, right. you working and be proud to work, be happy to work. Um, so work ethic is one, um, like I can't agree with Dennis Moore when he said be good to fans. I never call you guys fans, y'all my friends, y'all my homies. I get on Periscope with y'all, y'all get to see my real life, my, my, my house, my kids, my dog, we talking shit, you know, we having fun. Um, when I meet y'all at Expo, that's the, the most fun to me at Expo is meeting, meeting you guys, talking to you guys, you know. I do my own booths now, but when I was with Better Bodies, well, I'm still with them, but when I was working their booths, they would have to tell me, we gotta speed this lineup, <laughs> you know, because I would sit there and try to talk to you, right. talk to them, because it's, it's fun. I'm fascinated, I'm happy that somebody wanna come and talk to me or take a picture with me. So I'm gonna take a picture with as many people as I can. So be good to fans, work hard, belief. I believe, like, <laughs> they're saying it all. You know, belief, absolutely. And, and be, don't be, Whatever industry that you're in, and says fitness, because we, we're well in the fitness industry, be real about it. Don't bullshit people, don't lie. You can't, if it's something that you love and you really wanna make a career out of, be as pure as you can. And I live by that, I live by it, I live by it. So, that's my three. All right, moving on. Um, this, this question goes to everyone. Uh, this is from Ricky Rose. Uh, how do you combine stressful times with bodybuilding? Let we'll me start with you guys. Um, if I'm going through stressful times in life, first of all, I can get in the in biggest argument I ever got into with anybody. And go to the gym, and then when I get through training, it's like, I don't forgot know. about that. You know, so the gym to me is the biggest stress reliever of all. Um, yeah, that's for me. For me, I mean, I, talking about when I was still um, as, as a competitor, I have to say, you know, everybody has stressful times, but you have to understand that that's life. You know, you got to have stress in life. You know, there's situations that can happen. These things happen with the family, you know, a uh, sickness. You see it all the time, but this is, you got, this is your job. You still have a mission you got to fulfill. You still have a goal. So you go to the gym. And this is an hour to an hour and a half where you just cut everything out around you. And this is just as simple as that. You know, stress is there while you think about it. And when you go to the gym and you do something different, just stop thinking about that stress for an hour and a half, get your job done, and go back to trying to handle the stress afterwards. That's the way I used to do it. Right. With me, lifting and training is my stress uh, relief. And that's what keeps me nice and level. And and in a good mood, and like Dex said, I've been, it's been times when I'm, I'm pissed, I'm mad at somebody. Mm -hmm. I start training and then it's like a natural high, you just feel good. I'll stop and may call them or text them and apologize or just try to squash it, you know, even if it's not my fault. So, personally with me, bodybuilding or training, exercise, movement, it's just good for you, it's good for your mind. Yeah, agreed. Okay, next question from Brent Bracey, uh, I thought it was both of you guys. Do you carb cycle for your conditioning or stick to one way of dieting? Well, that's all depends on uh, your personal state of mind, your personal, uh, your body is never the same. Your body can be 
one year it can be really stubborn and, and, and you got the carb cycle in order to make things happen. And the next year or a year before, you can eat all the carbs in the world and you'll get in shape. Mm -hmm. So this is something that you really have to figure out. And if you've been doing this for a while, or then you'll know what I'm talking about. If you don't, then you should have a coach who can understand uh, what's going on when your body's not responding you know, the way it should. So, and therefore, they, they carb cycle in order to uh, speed up metabolisms and just get things rolling, you know what I mean? So it's not, I wouldn't do it from the beginning. I would do it when your body comes to a stop, when you see uh, you get to kind of to a plateau and all of a sudden nothing changes no more, then you will start doing carb cycling and stuff like that. How many days, that's something you have to figure out. It's not easy, it's, uh, but it's also not hard, you know. You just drop your carbs, you see what happens, you, you know, you up your carbs again, you see if you fill out. Those are little things that you can figure out by yourself. Basically everything Dennis just said, man, um, you have to, you have to, um, Make adjustments, like Dennis said. Your body, you're not, your body may not react the same way as it did a year ago, or this diet just six months ago. You may have to learn how to make. You, so you will have to learn how to make adjustments. You will have to um, say, for instance, if, if um, like this year for me myself, this is the first time that I've been working with George that I was eating all of these carbs and still got in shape. We didn't do, you know, usually we cut my carbs when we hit about three, four weeks out, usually we cut my carbs back or what have you, but this year, we did none of that. So, like Dennis said, you have to play it by ear, you have to learn how to make adjust, proper adjustments if need be. If not, you know, have a coach who knows what they're doing. No comment. I like carbs. <laughs> Every day I eat nothing but carbs. <laughs> All right, this is a good question right here. This is for both of you guys. <coughs> this is from Anthony X Nine X Two. If you could compete against any bodybuilder in their prime, who would it be? Who me? Yes, against yeah, nobody. If I were, if I was you in my prime, prime. Mm -hmm. huh? You don't did it already. I competed against the best That's right. in the world. I just like Dexter. I gotta say, I was fortunate enough to compete in three different decades. Yeah. In the nineties. 2000s and after 2000, I mean right. 2010 and 2012. Right. Yeah. So I was in th basically, you know, I, I had them all. All the people that I looked up to when I started, mm -hmm. I got to stand next to them. Right. You know, if it's Kevin, uh, Sean, Flex Wheeler, um, 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 Ronnie Coleman, those are all, Mike Matarazzo, those are all guys right. I got the chance to stand next to on the Olympia stage. So I competed against all of them. The right. only people that I didn't compete against that I looked up to in the, in the, in the, in the very past was of course, Lee Haney and Dorian Yates, but that was it. These Same here. Exactly. I, I, yeah, I competed against everybody. Mm -hmm. um, the generation that everybody says is the best generation, I competed against all those guys. Um, and still am today. Um, guy, probably, you know, somebody that I wish I could have competed against was Dorian. And I, I know I got my ass tore up, but, you know, at least I could have said I competed against Right. With the guy um, and Lee Haney, of course. Um, I won't go all the way back as Arnold. That's too far. But definitely those two guys. I would, wish I could have competed against. I got a question for y'all. Okay, we all know, you know, Arnold was very critical of bodybuilding, the current state of bodybuilding. I believe it was after the Arnold's this year, and you know, talking about um, bodybuilders. You know, talking about that more aesthetic physique or, you know, more of that, that taper and not having the stomach stick out. How do y'all feel about that? What, what are y'all thoughts on that? Well, he has a point. Mm -hmm. But he, has, he also has to understand that bodybuilding 30 years ago, it's not like it is today. Right. When you look at the cars 30 years ago, they didn't have the horsepower that right. they have today. Right. So you can't put all that horsepower in a little car. Right. It's not possible. So this is kind of how I look at it. Right. So if you want to, you know, and this is because it started with uh, basically already, already Lee Haney, or even at Arnold. Arnold was the biggest in his prime in his time. Mm -hmm. Next and next with the uh, two Lou they were so far ahead of everybody else mm -hmm. that it wasn't even funny. And then we had Lee Haney, who was at two hundred forty something pounds, mm -hmm. the biggest guy on stage. Right. Then comes Dorian Yates. Surpasses that now everybody chases Dorian Yates, right. and if the champ is the biggest guy, so what are you going to do if you want to beat him? You're going to chase him. 
Right. So you got to fight him with his weapons. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and not everybody thinks, ah, I can't get there and I'm going to just stay where I'm at and I'm going to just wait. Right. You know, like that. So, he just, so I'm going to sit back and wait till they, they slip. See, I thought I had to chase the next, next to Ronnie. There's Ronnie. Now, everybody's trying to chase Ronnie. And if you get, I mean, if you're 5'7 and you weigh 310 pounds, I mean, mm -hmm. there's no way you can have an aesthetic physique like you're fighting Sam. It's exactly. not possible. Right. But when you look at the hardcore fans nowadays, they want to see freaks. That's right. mm -hmm. It started with Marcus Rule. Everybody said they loved Marcus Rule. He didn't have the best physique out there, mm -hmm. but he had muscle on top of muscle. Right. That's right. You yeah. know, and that's what people love, and they want to see freaks. Mm -hmm. You know, if you come with a Frank Sane physique now, mm -hmm. you place out of the top 15. Right. That's it. I know, it's, it's, it sounds really, really harsh on Frank, but that's just the way it is, the right. way people judge now, the way judges look at the physiques. You know, Phil Heath is 250. 240, he ain't no 180, like Sean Ray used to be 187 and he was second at the Olympic. Yeah. That couldn't happen no more. Right. You know, so that's the reason why these people are trying to get bigger. And if you eat that amount of food, there's no way that your waist stays this right. small. It, right. It's got to go somewhere. That's right. You know what I mean? Right. And especially when you diet for three months and then you are really low carbs and your stomach, you wake up in the morning, your stomach is flat, everything's cool. Right. Now you start carb loading and this got to go somewhere. Right. So now, so as long as you hold it in, you're fine. Right. But you run out of breath. See, I try to tell people that because I, I hate when I hear people say, "Oh, Roy gut, HGH gut." I'm like, "Ain't got nothing to do with Roy. This is carbs. It's, it's carbs. When, when you're really lean, you don't have fat everywhere. The food is stored in your stomach and it right. sticks out. But your abs on top. I don't like, know why they come with Roy's insulin. Why? It's, how it's come big. others?" That don't have a, a, a distended stomach. It's, it's people they don't use Roy or been, insulin or never whatever. Never been to the, that level, and they have no idea. Of course not. So that's why. Of course not. I think that Arnold's statement benefited you big time. Yeah, I agree with you 100. percent And I'm glad he made that statement <laughs> right. mm. because now maybe you know first thing, first thing, first thing that's being said now in meetings is make sure you control yourself when you're up there. Make sure you control your stomach, you know, because we want we want to get, you know, um, more mainstream, so right. to speak, you know. Right. So having big old huge guys with guts hanging on out, that's not very appealing. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Um, but, look, but, but look at it this way. Compare the last two, three years mm -hmm. with the mid-90s, in the late 90s and in, in the early 2000s, there was Tony Yates, there was Ronnie Coleman. Mm -hmm. They definitely weren't anybody with a small waist. Right. If you think about it, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I've seen videos with the Dorian where he did, you can't be 260 pounds on stage mm -hmm. and don't have that. It's not possible. Right. Right. Well, if you look at Ronnie, yeah, it is possible, mm -hmm. but that's a game genetics. Right. Right. You know, he, and he's an eater. It's not that right. he can't eat. But I think that's genetic. Some people right. just get digestive food much, much quicker, mm -hmm. you know, don't have that distension problem, you right. know what I mean? I had days, sometimes you gotta figure out what food it is too. Yeah. Sometimes some food, right. certain food will do that to Allergies. You. Yeah, exactly, and you don't know. You can develop an allergy <coughs> or intolerance against something over the years. It doesn't right. have to be when you're born, you know? That's it right. can happen when you get older, right. you know? I gotta say, I, I, I like what he said because you know, Dexter's got a physique that I'm just really a fan of. Um, I think Phil is very aesthetic, despite yeah. what everybody's saying. I think Phil has a perfect physique as well. But my one of my up and coming guys that I got a lot of lot of faith in is uh, William Bonac. Yeah, I think that if guy he was a, if he was this much taller, mm -hmm. yeah, right. he's a little on the short side, so it's always hard. Yeah, right. for a shorter guy mm -hmm. to beat a taller guy who's in right. shape too. Right. right, even if it's just three, four inches, right. because it just looks different. Yeah. He looks, he's already so massive mm -hmm. for his frame right. that he's, he, he's maxed out. Right. There's nothing he can do. Mm -hmm. he, if he gets bigger, he will hurt himself. Right. So if I was, if I was him right now, and, and I, don't get me wrong, I like him, and I told him, right. I said, you should have fifth place. Because right. I told him, I said, well, if, if, I, if, if I would have been in charge, mm -hmm. I would have had him be Brody, mm -hmm. Rami, and it was and branch right. to be honest, because he was next to Dexter, mm -hmm. the only person that day that was spot on, right, one hundred percent. He was crisp, clean mm -hmm. skin, everything was there. Right, you know what I mean. Right, but when you're short, 
mm -hmm. it's a little bit of a disadvantage right. unless the guys are taller or off. If they're right. off, you kill them. Like right. he did in Finland. He right. beat Cedric McMillan. Mm -hmm. That's something that can never happen mm -hmm. if Cedric would be on. Was on, right. Cannot, cannot happen. Mm -hmm. This is what I was, Arnold always said. That's what, what he benefited off. Right. If you're taller, you just always look better. Right, right. Yeah. But here's a guy to watch out for, because, uh, yeah. but like I said, it's going to be very hard. He couldn't, mm -hmm. yeah, he's too heavy for 212. He tried that already. Yeah, he's but I'm glad he's getting his, 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 his dudes right. now. They, they see him and they yeah. move him up. So, you know. he's, he's one of those people that's just a pleasure to be around. Just a yeah. nice. He's a good dude. Nice you met him, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we both were gasped at the body. Okay, so yeah. We, yeah. We, we traveled together. Just had a little discussion with him one time, but I think this is good. This is good, man. Is no, it? We're good now. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, but I talked to him, you know, I was talking to him backstage at, in the, on the tour. And I'm like, and he was so pissed off last year. Mm -hmm because he wasn't placing as well and mm -hmm. after the Olympic, He placed well, I think he placed pretty good at Olympia last year. Eight? No, last year he didn't place. No, nah, no. Yeah. This year seven, right? Well, he, he yeah. placed good in a couple other shows and then he got to Olympia didn't place, so he was really Right, he won the Tampa. There you go. Yeah. So he was really pissed about all that stuff. And I, you know, I was backstage talking to him now and he placed well at the Olympia. Then he turned around and placed well at Spain. Placed well at Prosper. And won well. Finland. And then I said, what I tell you? Then I tell you to be patient. He's like, yeah, big bro, you told me. I said, listen, now it's time for you to start getting your face out there. A lot of people know who you are. He's like, really? I'm like, a lot of people talking to town. They're talking about your ass. If you you're a top, top eight Olympian, you're going to be That's talking right. about it, especially right. With that position. if you got size. Yeah. I said, so now, now he's got to be consistent. You got to do the arm out. Right. You get time yeah. to do the arm out. Mm -hmm. Now he's just got to be consistent and compete. Show your face on stages. Yeah. Right. Right. You, know, you, you got to show the people. The, the fans and the judges that you a guy, whenever you step on stage, they better be ready because you're going to be right. right. You know what I mean? Right. He could be another Dexter, maybe not with Dexter's physique, right. but he could be a, a, I mean, a, 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 a little freak. Right. I call him a little freak. Cause he has, I call him baby guy. Yeah, he has. He has <laughs> unbelievable size on his body. It's right. crazy. His yeah. lats are almost too low. They almost make him look blocky from the back. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Because, right. you know, everybody say, oh, lats all the way down to the trunks. Yeah. But that looks like your waist is coming out too much. Right. You know what I mean? From the front, not so much, but from the back, it looks, almost looks blocky. But right. somebody, like, somebody like me would have wished I had about five inches more lats to yeah. towards, towards my You know what I'm saying? You know? Yeah, no, I really, I really appreciate you guys just stopping through and hollering at the people, the good people out there in the world. What's up? We keep it coming. <laughs> You know, much love to both of y'all. Y'all a legend. I'm soaking up game right now. Every time I'm around both of y'all, mm -hmm. so I'm learning. You know what I mean? So hopefully y'all see me on stage soon in that new <laughs> that new division. Yeah, yeah we can't wait for that. Yeah, you know. Yeah, we're gonna Finally be something for me. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, you know. I think that's gonna be good, Mike. That's yeah. gonna be good for you, bro. Yeah. On, the real, on the real. Yeah, I just, you know, I'm 5'11", so I probably have to be, what, 300 pounds off season, right? No, because, because you can only be how much on stage. No, I'm saying like, right, right. right. If I was us. Oh, right. we could be an right. open. Yeah, and yeah. I, I don't want to be that big. 5'11", you got to yeah. be 260 at least. Yeah. Right, right. So this is perfect, you know, yeah. so. So, right. so what, so what, uh, if you're 5'11", what, 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 your weight have to be what? It's like 210 or 207, something like that. So it's kind of light for me, but, you know. So if they, if. Yeah, because they have this category in Europe for mm -hmm. a couple of years now. Right, classic body. And they go by centimeters. So mm -hmm. if you're 175, so 5'11 would probably be one, close to 180. Mm -hmm. So that means, isn't it like minus 110? Or plus? I remember, I looked at the chart and it was where I'm at, I would have to be like 210 or something like 210? that. 210? Yeah. What, where are you at right now? 225. Oh, it's perfect for you. Um, you already lead, so yeah, this is so, perfect for you. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I think it'll be good. So they they, they go by they check your height and your weight, right? Because I was I was talking to somebody yesterday. An inch makes a lot of difference with with mass. Oh yeah, no, that's why I would put some in some some, some in, in like some of my shoes. I'd be five yeah, five that's like six pounds, pounds. Right. right? And and with us, that's yeah. like ten pounds. Yeah, yeah. easy. Yeah. I'll be guppy stepping on that, uh, down, on that, uh, you know, measure me 6'1". Right. You know, 210. Yeah. Yeah. Come out, you'd yeah. be 5'11". Right. Cool. All right, man. Well, we're about to sign out. Y'all keep sending questions. We'll keep giving y'all some, some quality content and, and, and answering everything y'all throw at us. All right? Much love. Peace.